Dear students, welcome back to the lecture series on statistical thermodynamics. In the previous video, we discussed about partition function, evaluation of independent molecular partition functions like translational and rotational partition functions. In this class, we will discuss about vibrational partition function. Let's see how to derive expressions for vibrational partition function. When we deal with the vibrations of a molecule, uh, for example, diatomic molecule, we consider the molecule as simple harmonic oscillator. We have seen that while dealing with rotational partition function or for evaluating rotational energy, we consider the diatomic molecule as a rigid rotator. Similarly, for determining the vibrational energy or while deriving the expression for a vibrational partition function, we consider the molecule, whether it is a diatomic or polyatomic molecule, as simple harmonic oscillator. And the energy of such a simple harmonic oscillator is given by epsilon v equals v plus half h nu, where v is the vibrational content number. It can be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Nu is the vibration frequency, uh, which is given by nu equals 1 by 2 pi root of k by nu, where k is a force constant and nu is the reduced mass. H is the Planck's constant. If the vibrational energy levels are non degenerate, we can write G equals 1. We have seen that. The partition function can be express, expressed as Q equals summation for vibrational levels V equals 0 to infinity E raised to minus epsilon V by KT where epsilon V is the vibrational energy. So substituting for epsilon V we get Q V equals summation V equals 0 to infinity E raised to minus v plus half h nu by kt. So that is qv equals summation v equals 0 to infinity e raised to minus v h nu by kt into e raised to minus half h nu by kt. While dealing with rotation partition function, we replaced this summation term by integration. But here in the case of uh, simple harmonic oscillators, the spacing between the neighboring energy levels are large compared with the rotational and translational energy levels. Or we can say that H nu is greater than Kt. So here we are not replacing summation by integration. So retaining the summation terms and expanding, we have Qv equals summation V equals 0 to infinity e raised to minus v h nu by kt into e raised to minus half h nu by kt. Or we can write qv equals e raised to minus half h nu by kt into summation v equals 0 to infinity e raised to minus v h nu by kt. Now expanding this term, if v equals 0, so that will be e raised to minus 0, that is 1. Plus, when v equals 1, that is e raised to minus h nu by kt. When v equals 2, that will be e raised to minus 2 h nu by kt, etc. So that we can write qv equals e raised to minus h nu by 2 kt. And 1 plus e raised to minus h nu by kt plus e raised to minus 2 h nu by kt plus etc. Now, let x equals h nu by kt. We are giving a substitution. Let x equals h nu by kt. So that we can write qv equals e raised to minus h nu by 2 kt into 1 plus e raised to minus x plus e raised to minus 2x plus etc. Since x equals h nu by kt. Now uh, we have the binomial expansion 1 minus x the whole raised to minus 1 is equal to 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus etc. So similarly, 1 plus instead of x, e raised to minus, instead of x square, e raised to minus 2x plus etc. So this can be written as the expansion of qv equals 
e raised to minus h nu by 2 kt into 1 minus instead of x we are writing e raised to minus x. So 1 minus e raised to minus x the whole raised to minus 1. Therefore qv equals e raised to minus h nu by 2 kt by 1 minus e raised to minus x. Now substituting for x we get qv equals e raised to minus h nu by 2 kt by 1 minus e raised to minus h nu by kt. Now we are introducing the characteristic vibrational temperature and that is theta v. So let theta v equals h nu by k where theta v has dimensions of temperature which is known as characteristic vibrational temperature. So this can be rewritten in terms of theta v as q v equals e raised to minus theta v by 2t by 1 minus e raised to minus theta v by t. So this is the vibrational partition function for diatomic molecules. When we deal with polyatomic molecules, there are linear polyatomic molecules and non-linear polyatomic molecules. For linear polyatomic molecules, there are 3n minus 5 vibrational degrees of freedom. So QV is equal to e raised to minus h nu by 2 kt by 1 minus e raised to minus h nu by kt, the whole raised to 3n minus 5. And if it is non-linear molecules, there are 3n minus 6 vibrational degrees of freedom. So QV equals e raised to minus h nu by 2 kt by 1 minus e raised to minus h nu by kt, the whole raised to 3n minus 6. So these equations represents the vibrational partition function for diatomic and polyatomic molecules. If you are writing in terms of h nu by kt, then we have qv is equal to e raised to minus h nu by 2 kt by 1 minus e raised to minus h nu by kt for diatomic molecules. And if you are writing in terms of theta v, which is the characteristic vibrational temperature, then we have the vibrational partition function qv is equal to e raised to minus theta v by 2t by 1 minus e raised to minus theta v by t. And this is the vibrational partition function for diatomic molecules. And for polyatomic molecules, for linear, we will have the factor 3n minus 5. And for nonlinear molecules, we will have the factor 3n minus 6. Now we know that for a vibrating system, it will always have a zero point energy. That is the lowest possible energy when V equals 0 is not, the energy is not 0. The zero point energy of a vibrating system is half H nu. So always the vibrational levels are measured with respect to the lowest vibrational energy level. And the energy difference between the upper and the lowest vibrational level can be written as delta epsilon V equals V plus half H nu minus half H nu. So that is equal to V H nu. Then we can write the vibrational partition function as Q V is equal to summation V equals 0 to infinity E raised to minus V H nu by K T. Since the energy of separation between the upper and the lowest vibrational level is V H nu. So that is E raised to minus V H nu by K T which can be written as 1 plus E raised to minus H nu by K T plus E raised to minus 2 H nu by K T plus etc. So this is the expansion of 1 minus e raised to minus h nu by kt the whole raised to minus 1. Or we can write qv is equal to 1 by 1 minus e raised to minus h nu by kt. So this equation represents the vibration partition function for energies above the zero point energy. So we have two different forms of vibrational partition function. The first one is the partition function including the zero point energy and the second one is the vibrational partition function for energies above zero point energy.
Now, if we write the vibration partition function in terms of theta v, we have q v is equal to e raised to minus theta v by 2 t by 1 minus e raised to minus theta v by t. At very low temperatures, theta v by t is large. So, e raised to minus theta v by 2 t by 1 minus e raised to minus theta v by t is approximately equal to e raised to minus theta v by 2 t. Since in the denominator, e raised to minus theta v by t is very small compared to 1. Theta v by t is large, that means e raised to minus theta v by t is very small. So, this equation will reduce to e raised to minus theta v by 2 t at low temperature. If it is at high temperature, then theta v by t is small. So that means q v will be equal to e raised to minus theta v by 2 t by 1 minus. So this term can be expanded as 1 minus theta v by t plus theta v by t the whole square plus etc. So that can be approximated as t by theta v e raised to minus theta v by 2 t. So these two equations shows how vibrational partition fun function can be expressed at low and high temperature. So in this class, we have seen how to derive the expressions for vibrational partition function for a diatomic molecule, for linear polyatomic molecules and for non-linear polyatomic molecules.